Hello, what is up YouTube? Today we're going to be checking out the Realm of Ultramar. Never heard anything about it, but some more Warhammer 40k coming to you guys. More from all these awesome YouTubers, guys. Hope you enjoy the reactions. Like I said, thank you guys for subscribing. Hitting that like button. It really supports the channel. We're trying to get to the 1,000 subscribers. So thank you guys so much. Like I said, I hope you enjoy the videos. Like I said, there's other amazing videos on the channel, so make sure y'all check out those reactions as well. Guys, if you want to see more of me, I stream throughout the nights, Eastern Time, on Twitch, and I have other socials as well. All those are in the links below. Like I said, you can find everything about those down there. Guys, stay awesome. Let's pull this up. Let's do this. Show some more love to the Templin Institute. Let's go. The Imperium of Man is a dominion of colossal size, spanning the galaxy and uniting a million worlds and a trillion souls. To rule over such an empire directly is impossible, even for the labyrinthine organizations that serve the Imperial bureaucracy. Instead, the Imperium entrusts planetary governors, warlords, Castilians, and even rogue traders to rule over worlds and territories in the Emperor's name. I'm gonna rewind because I want to cut her off. I just want to say I don't even know which faction I like the most. Like that's how awesome they all are. I'm just gonna say that, man. Warhammer is amazing. Rule over worlds and territories in the Emperor's name. These fiefdoms range from simple outposts on the fringes of human territory to entire subsectors, almost rivaling the power of Holy Terra itself. Yet even since the days of the Great Crusade, perhaps no single realm has done more to contribute to the power of the Imperium or win more glory in the name of the Emperor than that of Ultramar. Located on the southern reaches of the Eastern Fringe, the realm of Ultramar has historically consisted of roughly 500 worlds. This number fluctuated across the eras before being reduced to just under a dozen in the aftermath of the Horus Heresy. Despite this, the region has always been one of the wealthiest and most powerful in the Imperium, and its worlds maintain a level of economic and technological sophistication almost unheard of within the greater galaxy. Even on its most industrialized planets, Imperial manufacturing centers operate without the toxic wastelands endemic elsewhere in the Imperium. Rarer still, the Imperial populace has managed to exist in balance with nature, allowing for widespread farming and oceans that still teem with fish. Dude, I love the freaking ships and stuff too, man. So cool, man. At its center lies the capital world of Macrag, considered bleak and rocky by many, yet home to formidable and majestic mountain ranges, broken only by the more hospitable lowlands where much of the population resides. Citizens of Ultramar live within a highly martial society in which service to the Imperium is regarded as the highest calling. This is in large part due to their subservience to the Ultramarine's Adeptus Astartes chapter, which draws recruits from Macrag and the surrounding subsector. It is a point of pride, especially amongst the older aristocratic families, to have provided a recruit, and communities proudly display statues and idols of the space marines who were born there. While this method of recruitment is commonplace across the various Space Marine chapters, few recruit from such a wide variety of worlds and fewer still are as directly involved in the administration and governance of their territories as the Ultramarines. The realm of Ultramar is governed by a largely feudal system very much akin to that of the rest of the Imperium. All within its borders are subjects of the Emperor, but it is the chapter master of the Ultramarines who holds absolute authority and- Dude, rewinding him once again. Like I said, every time I pause, I'm gonna rewind just a little bit so we don't cut off any words and I don't wanna miss anything. But when I pause, I just wanna check out stuff you know. I hope y'all appreciate that. Like I said, I, I just like checking it out. Like I said, showing you what I appreciate. Like, man, like, dude, that armor is freaking awesome. Like, like it's so cool, man. When I pause, I'm just like taking it all in, man. It's really awesome. Let's continue. The chapter master of the Ultramarines who holds absolute authority and bestowed the additional title of Lord Macrag. 
Across the millennia, regents of Ultramar have also been appointed, as well as tetrarchs who served as regional governors and ruled over dozens of star systems. The corruption and ineffectual rule that continues to plague the Imperium has seemingly never taken root in Ultramar, and great effort is made to safeguard the prosperity of its citizenry, so long as military requirements are met. The subsector is even exempt from paying the Imperial tithe. Instead, it contributes directly to the Ultramarines chapter. The Ultramarines are the most prestigious and well-known military force to operate out of Ultramar, but each world also maintains its own planetary defense force, and the realm as a whole maintains several other branches of service. The Ultramar Auxilla consists of several hundred regiments, often conscripted into the Imperial Guard when required. In space, Ultramar operates a sizable defense fleet, with six enormous fortresses presiding over strategic positions and valuable shipping lanes. That's freaking insane, bro. Each is a powerful bastion in its own right, with enough firepower to destroy a small moon. Several paramilitary organizations also exist, including the Intelligence Service Vigil Operati and the law enforcement agency known as the Precental Guard. The level of autonomy afforded to the realm of Ultramar has, at times, brought it into conflict with the Greater Imperium, with many viewing the subsector with envious eyes. The existence of such a powerful empire within the Imperium has even been called heretical, yet for many, the realm of Ultramar is the last remnant of the true Imperium, before it fell into corruption and decay. The history of the realm of Ultramar is closely linked to that of Rebude Gilliman, who reclaimed the region from the horrors of the Age of Strife and turned the subsector into the jewel of the Imperium's border territories. One of 20 genetically engineered superhumans known as the Primarchs, Rebude and his brothers were created by the Emperor of Mankind and intended to lead his armies in a great crusade to reunite the scattered human race. Yet before this plan could come to fruition, the Primarchs were scattered across the galaxy by the ruinous powers of chaos. Rebude arrived on Macrag, center of a dying star empire, which, despite the ravages of the Long Night, had still managed to preserve much of its technology, and even maintained contact with a few other worlds with a small fleet of short-range starships. By the time the Emperor reunited with his son on Macrag, Rebude Gilliman had unified the planet under his brilliant leadership and restored its productivity and prosperity. Swearing fealty to the Emperor, Ultramar's enormous industrial strength was put to work, delivering untold numbers of soldiers and munitions to serve in the Great Crusade. The Horus Heresy was as devastating to Ultramar as to the rest of the Imperium, and the traitor legions relentlessly attacked the worlds of the subsector to tie down Gilliman and his Space Marine Legion and prevent them from reinforcing the battered defenders on Holy Terra. On the agro world of Kalth alone, the Ultramarines lost nearly half their legion, and while the Loyalist forces would eventually emerge victorious... I don't know who makes this art, bro, but it is so freaking good. Like, it is clean. Their legion, and while the Loyalist forces would eventually emerge victorious, their tremendous losses prevented them from pursuing the war beyond the confines of Ultramar. In this most desperate hour, with the fate of Terra and the Greater Imperium still unknown, a contingency plan was put into action, briefly transforming the realm of Ultramar into the Imperium Secundus before contact with Terra was re-established and the traitors were defeated. In the aftermath of the conflict, as the Imperium struggled to repair the damage Horus had wrought and trillions mourned the entombment of their Emperor, Gilliman and his legion worked tirelessly to bind the Imperium back together. Ultramar alone was able to supply new recruits at such a rate that within just a few short years, nearly half the Space Marines in the galaxy had come from McCraig or other nearby worlds. Yet Gilliman was all too aware of the potential for another civil war, and despite the great power of Ultramar, the decision was made to splinter the realm. Ultramar was reduced to but a smattering of planetary systems, and the position of Tetrarch was abolished. In time, Gilliman too would pass into legend, poisoned by a demonic blade and, like the Emperor before him, entombed within a stasis field. Even without their Primarch, Ultramar endured. 
During the War of the Beast, its forces contributed to the destruction of the largest orc war in recorded history, and millennia later, Macrag itself would become a battlefield during the First Tyrannic War. This latter conflict would be one of the most devastating in Ultramar's history, with even Gilliman's shrine at the enormous polar fortress on Macrag nearly overrun by horrific Tyranid bio-warriors. Ultramar's greatest test would arrive during Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade. With the destruction of the Cadian Gate and the galaxy torn asunder by the Great Rift, every hope seemed lost and Macrag was once more a battlefield as traitor space marines of the Black Legion pursued the fleeing Imperial remnants of Cadia to the planet's surface. What they found there, however, would change the fate of the galaxy. Rebute Gilliman had been reborn, his wounds healed, and together with his Ultramarines, they threw back the Chaos Host and embarked on a campaign to reorganize and rearm the Imperium for the greatest and possibly final conflict. As Gilliman departed for Holy Terra to seek the guidance of his father and break through to the scattered Imperial worlds on the far side of the Great Rift, he declared the 500 worlds of Ultramar restored. This art is freaking gorgeous. Like, it's just the bridge, the freaking, I mean, it's, it's beautiful. ...side of the Great Rift, he declared the 500 worlds of Ultramar restored, expanding the power of the realm to its greatest extent since the Horus Heresy. Today, Chapter Master Marnius Kalgar acts as Lord Defender of Greater Ultramar in Gilliman's absence, with some of the greatest heroes of the realm serving in the revived role of Tetrarch. They are engaged in an immense undertaking to restore the power of their newly expanded dominion, raise great new armies and fleets, marshal their forces to aid in Rebute Gilliman's struggle against the forces of chaos, and bring the holy light of the Emperor to a galaxy fallen into darkness. That flame sword though is legit. So that was the realm of Ultramar, man. Freaking insane, bro. Like this lore is it's just so deep. There's so much. It's amazing. Like it's it's absolutely amazing. The music they put to these videos, all these uh lore content creators are awesome. Like, they're, they're top-notch, man, and I'm glad I can check them out with you guys. Hope you enjoy my reaction, guys. Like I said, thank you guys for subscribing. Thank you for hitting that like button. It, it puts it out there on YouTube more, and we continue to grow and grow our uh, community here on YouTube. So, guys, I would love to see you guys on Twitch sometime if you ever want to come by. Like I said, all my links and stuff are in the description below. Stay tuned. Like I said, more is coming, and uh, stay awesome and stay safe, guys. See you in the next video.